we've, in, we've decreased our food imports from 42% to 17% despite this because of the amount we've reduced the, the um, grazing for livestock. Um, so, second part of that, if we go away from the food now, is thinking about how we grow our fuel and, and our energy that we need. So, land use today, again, lots of pink from the grassland for livestock, and in, in ZCB, um, we mix it up a lot more. Um, so this is looking at the biomass side of things. So it's short revision <coughs> forestry, which is the red. Um, it is short revision coppice, which is a sort of um, green, sort of. And mixed grasses, which is again beige. <laughs> Getting quite specific colours here. Um, and I just wanted to throw in a slide here, biomass, because um, there's a lot of conflicting information out there about biomass and some of you might be thinking biomass is awful we shouldn't be doing it you know it's not um carbon neutral it's bad in our scenario um it's uk only biomass because a huge problem with these large biomass plants that the government is planning is the fact that they're then importing wood from north america um, which is not helping the situation at all um we use second generation biomass which basically means that this is kind of woody or grass um, biomass rather than food crops so we're not taking away from where we would grow our food in order to create fuel for ourselves. Um, we have the surplus electricity, but we do have minimal land. Um, and we need to think quite carefully about how we manage that. And so what we were saying is with this minimal land we've got, but the surplus electricity, we want to be able to create the synthetic gas and the fuels. Um, another rule we have is that, I don't know if it's quite phrased correctly, but if there is some, you know, beautiful old forest that is, you know, is capturing carbon wonderfully. There's no point in getting rid of that so that we can then grow our short rotation coppice or anything like that. It just doesn't make sense. Which is why we're actually putting back into those um, conserved and unmanaged areas. Um, as I said before, short rotation forest coppice and grasses, which means that every sort of two to three years we're getting and we're reaping the benefits of it, um, but it is still acting as a carbon sink. Um, Minimal waste is in we don't use a lot of waste to generate our biomass um, because a key part of that with the um, non-energy emissions was that we didn't want to have as much waste as we currently do and a big part of that is the sort of reducing demand, reusing, recycling. Um, so we would actually hope that rather than saying, oh, it's okay, we can waste as much as we want because we'll then generate biomass from it, we're actually cutting down on our waste. Um, it's also not the backbone of our energy system. Um, we use biomass because we can use the fuels and the gas that it generates to heat our cells, but also to keep um, flying and to keep using trucks and lorries and tractors and things like that. In the future, it may well be that there are alternatives to what we currently use, but as I said before, we're not thinking, oh, they'll invent something in 2025, it'll be fine. We're saying, what have we got now that we can use? Um, and a big thing with biomass is you've got to have the policy that's closely monitoring it, um, which is something that we would hope for. Um, but we are very specific in the scenario about the type of biomass that we are using. Um, and then the final part of our land use is capturing carbon. So, again, getting rid of a lot of that grassland for the pesky white livestock. Um, and we're massively increasing the amount of forest that we have. So we increase hugely the unmanaged, which is the dark green, unharvested, um, but we also increase the amount of wood products that we use here. Because if we can increase, say, the number of timber frame builds that go on in this country, as opposed to using cement, where it's not needed on a one or two storey building, um, obviously that's going to massively help in decreasing our emissions. So, double forest area. Um, we restore 50% of peatlands. As you can see, peatlands in the previous model I showed you, you might not be able to remember it few slides back, peatland didn't even feature in the way that our um, land is currently used because it's been eroded and at the moment peat is actually emitting carbon rather than storing it and we've got peatland that's 10,000 years old but it's been you know quietly storing carbon all that time and so it's really important that we restore that peatland um, because it plays a huge part in our carbon capture and again the increased use of wood products um, and by Increasing the amount of carbon capture that we do, we can generate about 45 megatons of CO2, well, sorry, we can trap 45 megatons of CO2 per year. Um, and that basically, what, oh, sorry, healthier, lower, less land, support system, safe, proven support, <coughs> biodiversity benefits, 
sorry, then I get onto my next <coughs> slide, which is net zero. So that um, last bit about the carbon capture, that is those 45 megatons of CO2 there, which is counterbalancing the aviation effects, the non-energy, and the bit of land use, which is currently emitting carbon. Um, and that is how we get to net zero using Zero Carbon Britain. Um, that's obviously a really abstract you know, report that's been written that only got published a few months ago. So what does it mean next? You know, what are we going to be doing with this? Well, this is a bit random. This is basically newspaper articles from the past week. Um, <laughs> ignore baby George, but we're open to fracking, says the National Trust. Worst storm for 26 years. Coalition signs off Britain's nuclear rebirth. Dysfunctional energy market, nuclear, uh, gas bills, waste of food, energy bills. As you can see, all the issues that ZTV is addressing are coming up every week in the media. I work in the media office at CAT, and every day I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, there's so much going on. Because even if people don't actually realise it, we're all hugely concerned with the issues that Zero Carbon Britain is bringing up. Um, and so what we want to do, obviously, is talk to people about it. We want to look at what ZCB is showing us that we need to do, and also what we can do. Um, so net zero greenhouse gas emissions is achievable. We can keep the lights on with carbon neutral renewable energy systems, healthier balanced lives, lowering greenhouse gas emissions, and this positive impact on land use. Um, and the emissions that cannot currently be eliminated can be balanced out using that safe, sustainable, and reliable carbon capture. So we're not talking about geoengineering because currently there's nothing that's been concretely proven to have worked apart from these very traditional methods. Again, things might change in the future, but we're using what we have now. Um, there's a huge potential for job creation and a healthier economy with Zero Carbon Britain. Um, just making the UK free of imports and its energy liberates us from those fluctuations in prices that are bound to happen in the future. Um, that could raise all our prices quite significantly. Um, we also did a rough estimate about the sort of the jobs that would be created using current um, industry levels in the sort of green industry. Um, and it was something like one and a half million new jobs could be created because what we would hope is that we would um, <coughs> create, we would build all the wind turbines that we need in this country, um, which is again why those industrial levels might actually increase for a little while before they decrease because we'd need to be creating the steel and the iron to build these things. Um, but again, it would generate jobs. Um, it can help us adapt to those expected changes and the unexpected changes, even just um, increasing our biodiversity, you know, increasing the amount of green spaces that we have in our cities could help with the runoff of water, it could help reduce flooding, um, all these sorts of things, other the flooding key environmental indicators. Um, and it would increase our well-being as individuals and as a society. And um, there's a real opportunity with what we're saying in Zero Carbon Britain for it to be a very focused but positive impact on our future. This collective purpose, um, because it's not <coughs> doom and gloom, depending on how you look at it. We're facing very serious challenges. Um, but by showing this sort of step-by-step -step process of the science that we've done, the research that's been conducted to get to this stage, um, I think is a, is a hugely sort of positive and heartening way to go about it. Um, and so what do we want from Zero Carbon Britain? What do we want from the people we talk to about Zero Carbon Britain? We want to close that gap between politics as usual and what science demands, um, because the science is screaming at us um, and the politicians are a little bit further behind. Um, <coughs> public engagement, and this is why you know, we come down off our slate quarry and we talk to groups. Because if we can't picture the solution, we will stay stuck in the problem and people will turn away from it and it won't be um, a positive future that we, that we so want to see. Um, we also have a lot of discussion papers. Um, in the back of the book, um, in the back of the report, we've got some Zero Carbon Britain in Egypt, Zero Carbon Britain in the 21st, office worker, 21st century office worker. There are some um, really interesting arguments out there seeking an environmental transition through health. Um, and what we wanted was we wanted people to engage with the report um, and have a think about what Zero Carbon Britain would mean to whatever they were interested in. Um, and there are, I think, maybe 10 published in the report, but there are loads more online. And if any of you are ever interested in writing one, get in touch with us um, because we want to see more of them. We want to see people engaging 
in everything that we've been talking about in Zero Carbon Britain. But I think that's me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm aware.